Hi everybody, in this series of videos we want to talk about the biological barriers that the nanoparticles are faced with when they are introduced within the body. Let's just imagine that we inject our nanoparticles and they want to circulate within the bloodstream to reach the cancerous tumors and then they have to be internalized by the cancerous cells to deliver their cargo the cargo is what they are carrying it can be a, you know it can be anything it can be a gene such as the dna rna it can be the therapeutics it can be the imaging modalities to get some images of the cancerous tissues you know the mri images the pet Im pet spect the fluorescence and all the imaging techniques that we introduced within the previous videos okay but when the nanoparticles want to internalize the cells they have to undergo a so-called endocytosis process endocytosis simply means the internalization within the cell as you know the cell membrane is made of plasma, you know, it has a plasma membrane uh, made of the phospholipids. So this phospholipid uh, isolated the cell from the, it, the harsh environment around it. And anything that wants to be exchanged within the cell or outside the cell has to cross this plasma membrane this phospholipid membrane but how this exchange happens it depends in the first place on the size of the f objects and on the second hand uh, on the you know endocytosis mechanism as you see here we, s we have different mechanisms that the cell uh, chooses to internalize those objects Let's start first with the phagocytosis. Well, phagocytosis is related to the macrophages. These are the cells which are responsible for getting rid of the foreign objects within the body because they are hazardous. They are dangerous for the body and they want to engulf them. They want to uptake the foreign materials and get rid of them. Well, it starts first uh, with the recognition of those foreign materials. In this case, we have the bacterium and the immunoglobins, which are on the surface of these bacterium. They will be recognized by these FC receptors on the surface of the macrophages. And after they are recognized, we will have the polymerization of the actin fibers. Actin fibers are simply some proteins. And this polymerization will lead into the, a sort of protrusion. As you see here, the membrane of the phagocyte cells is protruding. It is expanding, okay? Expanding to, to form a sort of a membrane as uh, sort of an envelope to engulf these bacterium inside but this mechanism happens for the large objects you know in the scale of micrometer for the smaller ones we have the so-called pinocytosis mechanism as you see here we have different mechanisms let's start with this one this is the micropinocytosis and after the objects are in the vicinity of these cells, the polymerization of the actin fibers will lead to mm, the cell membrane to expand here and form again a sort of a, a sort of an envelope, and it will internalize anything that is in this region. But the two more important mechanisms by which the cell internalize the materials and exchange something inside the cell or outside the cell uh, are the 
clathrin mediated and cavolin mediated endocytosis. The main difference in the first place is related to the size of the particles or these materials that they can internalize. For the clathrin, mainly the objects uh, around 120 nanometer and for the cavolin, the objects around 600 nanometers can be internalized and the second difference is that as you see here the polymerization of the actin fibers here is happening all around this uh, spherical shape which is called the vesicle or to be more precise it is called the pit so a pit a sort of a vesicle will be formed and after that the materials which is which are contained within this vesicle will be internalized in this picture as you see we have the cavolin mediated and in, in the cytosis you see here we have the albumin uh, proteins that want to be internalized by the cells but okay they can be anything but the, only the size matters okay when they are in the vicinity of the cell they will be recognized by by their specific receptors and be, <clears throat> and after the first recognition a sort of a cascade of different you know enzymatic and um, chem chemical reactions will occur to form the pit and the envelope that I told you before. Well, based on the intrinsic and natural properties of this blue membrane, we have the a sort of a you know liquid phase here. After this albumin, this ob object is recognized by this first receptor because this is a sort of you know liquid membrane these receptors can also diffuse all around here and they will form a sort of a cluster and as you see here the population of the proteins of the objects here are increasing so after it happens at the same time the cavolin dimers they are polymerizing here and after this is done now we have to somehow close this vesicle just remember that this mechanism and also the Clattering mediated mechanisms, all of these, okay, they are energy based uh, endocytosis. I mean that the conversion of ATP into ADP provides the energy for the cell to uh, do all these stuff to, you know, bind to the objects, to, the, to polymerize the cowlin dimers and etc and after this is done we will have the di dynamins which are responsible for closing the vesicle as you see here the the dynamins will come and form a sort of a collar or a spiral uh, ring around it which will then uh, somehow cut it and now this vesicle with everything which is inside it is inside the cell so again in this picture uh, this is for the uh, clathrin mediated endocytosis you see here the clathrin triskelia which will polymerize all around here and again it will form the pit and the vesicle and then it will be cut to let's say uh, deliver everything inside into the cell as we mentioned before 
a cascade of different reactions happens and here you can see that it will take some time for the cell to do the first recognition of the materials and internalize them finally okay and you, here you see the time scale of different reactions which are happening generally speaking it takes for the cell uh, you know for about some minutes if not some hours to internalize the objects but have you ever thought why do the cells internalize the you know proteins the glucose and every other things because they want to degrade them and to break them into different pieces to pro to be provided with the energy that they want or you know to to get the good things out of the materials that they are internalizing here you see that after the internalization and after the vesicle which is formed they will go in the first place into the early endosome in this step the cell recycles the good things that have been used to internalize the objects as you see here we mentioned that these receptors okay and these proteins will somehow form a cluster okay and when the vesicle is formed it contains the receptors and these proteins these are the good things for the cells you know the cell does not want to degrade also these receptors and these proteins so before the degradation process starts the cells have to make sure that all of these receptors and all of these proteins can go back on the cell surface and this is done by the formation of a sort of another vesicle before the degradation process starts so as you see here these are the receptors which were used in the first place and also the proteins can also be here and after that this vesicle will migrate onto the surface of the cell to deliver these good materials so after getting the getting rid of the good materials in the early endosome we will go to the late endosome this is the step which cell starts to degrade the materials that have been internalized okay well in this step and also in lysosome we will have a sharp decrease uh, in the pH of the environment to somehow accelerate the degradation of the materials which are in these two vesicles as you see here after the coated peat is internalized and we will and we go to the early endosome the pH of the uh, physiological uh, condition which is about 7.5 or 7.4 will decrease to uh, to about six in the early endosome okay in the early endosome we don't want to degrade any kind of materials but then in the late endosome the pH is decreased even more you know down to the five or six and here as you see in the lysosome the pH is degrade is uh, dropped down to five and this is the situation in which the cells can degrade the materials more easily if you remember uh, we mentioned that the peptidic bonds uh, the amide bonds the ones which contain the nitrogen and the hydrogen they can be degraded 
due to the decrease in the pH uh, within the late endosome and the lysosome. Here in these two steps, there are, all, there are also some proteins and enzymes which catalyze the degradation reaction and same as we had here for the recycling of the good things, we have the formation of another vesicles to recycle, as you see here, another enzymes and the proteins which have been introduced by the cell into these steps to accelerate the degradation process. But that was not the end of the story, you know. The same way that the cell wants to internalize something, sometimes they want to, you know, export some materials outside. For example, within the cell there is a sort of a structure called the Golgi network which produces the proteins which are useful for forming the phospholipid membrane okay and these proteins are produced by Golgi so uh, again the vesicle will be formed and when it reaches the cell surface uh, the membrane will open up to deliver the materials here now that we got familiar with the internalization mechanism uh, of the cells, let's see what happens to the nanoparticles. Well, here you see the uh, transmission electron microscopy images of the nanoparticles which have been opsonized due to the rapid absorption of the proteins and opsins all around the nanoparticles. And you see here is crystal clear and the absorption of these immunoglobins, proteins, and etc. on the surface will make these particles to be recognized by the receptors present on the surface of, on, of these macrophages. So, as we mentioned before here, here, after the recognition, the membrane will protrude and engulf the foreign materials and here the particles are recognized as the foreign materials and the protrusion the expansion of the cell membrane all around here will lead to the engulfment and uptake of the nanoparticles